Okay, give it a shot. Hello, welcome to another Motu Classic. A Motu Classics? Oops. Hello, welcome that's, to... That's, that's, uh, I think, Noisy Devil's site? Although that's a great site, that's not our site. I thought that was the name of the tour. That's the line, but there's a site called MotuClassics.com. Uh, I never heard of that site. Oh, well, it's a cool site. Um, hello, welcome to another Motu... Dot... Figures.com. <laughs> hello, welcome to another Motu Figures.com. We're gonna try this. We're going to do the ventriloquist act. You mouth the words, and I'll talk, and I'll cover my mouth with this bio. They so know they can what we're doing now. No, they don't, because they didn't see her mess up. Her mess up yeah, but you just told them. Oh, we're not doing anything. Please <laughs> mouth the words. Okay, ready? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Motook Figures to Come with the old spotlight. That's it, I'm breaking character. You stink at my voice. <laughs> Is that what you sound like? No. Oh, I thought it was. My bad. Alright, well today we are doing Man at Arms. Talk about a figure that kind of like sets the bar for the entire line. It's this figure. He is awesome. What do you think? Yeah, it's cool. I Just cool? It. No, he's amazing. Okay. That's one of the ones I want. Yeah, you, well see this is another example of when, you, when the line first started. You were still more into vintage figures, so yeah. you weren't always concerned about getting these guys. You were totally cool with the vintage. Till, um, but now, now the game has changed, and so we gotta play catch up. Third, when I turned, was it seven? You got me my first Motu pack, which was He Man vs Superman. Were you seven oh, or eight? That was my seventh birthday. Seventh birthday? No, eighth birthday. You're right. My eighth birthday. Yeah. 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 So you've been playing catch up on a lot of these. Mm -hmm. Well, first, let's start with the figure design. Um, the way he comes is without the mustache on, he's got a, a design that is very reminiscent of the card back art. He's mm -hmm. got like this, these fur pieces here, which I think is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so like the vintage art is having these kind of fur bits around the shoulders and stuff. It. Yeah. Like, they did a great job, even though they didn't have the filmation rights back way back then. Well, hang on, let's, 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 let's not, well, and, and Arms came out before the filmation cartoon. The vintage figures came out before the cartoon. Did you know that? No. Yeah, the vintage figures came out before the cartoon. So really, the Man in Arms in the cartoon was based off the figure. Oh. Yeah, so no, which is kind of weird that... So much like it. Yeah, well, what's kind of weird, though, is, is that the vintage figure doesn't have a mustache, but Filmation Cartoon does. We're not going to get into that. We'll start. We'll talk about the, th the mustache head in a second. Um, let's just talk about the figure design for first. Okay. So you've got these fur around the edges. I think that's really cool. Really intricate design to the armor. Like, they got all... They really amped up the vintage armor design. And added all these little extra bits here and there, like especially on the back. He's got like a couple little daggers, he's got a little like sleeping bag type thing or something. I don't know what this is, some kind of rolled up cloth. It's just got everything going on with this armor. I think it's beautiful. Um, and then on top of all to top it all off, I'm a sucker for holsters for weapons. Holsters? Yeah, like the He-Man line, you know how you can put the sword in the back and stuff yeah. like that, and Adora has like the, the gun holster and things yeah. like that. So his back is crazy with the things it can hold. And this is where we should start talking about his accessories. Loaded up with accessories. He's got, first of all, you've got the standard armor piece, which is two pieces, the front uh -huh. that pulls the back off. Yes, yeah, two pieces. This part, this part snaps off. This whole piece in the back. Yeah, let's check it out. We should probably do that. So this whole piece can snap off that holds all the armor on. Uh -huh. I mean, it holds all the weaponry. It can snap off. And his armor still stays on. Uh... And then you can pop it back on there. Okay. Um, as they, if we post that one video, well, I can tell a little something about Keaton, right? Well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that, because I might post that later. I know, but it's about Man at Arms, still. So. What about him? Keaton turned his Attorney of Guard into Battle Armor Man at Arms. Oh, yeah, well, Keaton, Keaton took a, one of the Attorney and Guard guys and put a Man at Arms head on, and now he calls it Battle Armor Man at Arms. We're getting off on a huge tangent. Yeah. Well, you're crazy with the tangents this time. What? <laughs> okay. So, anyway, so he comes with these these weapons. He's got, uh... Okay, well, I lost my train of thought. We're all over the place on this one. It's so crazy. Okay, so he's got the standard armor. He's got, like, an upper arm piece. Awesome. And then he's got the lower arm piece. And then he's got the leg piece. So that's a lot of parts right there off the bat. You would think that all they would do then was just do like the mace, because that's all the vintage figure came with, was this mace. But instead of just the mace, which snaps onto the back. That's cool. And I have something. 
Nah, well, hang on, hang on. Just, just let, let me let me finish this, and you can say what you want to say. Uh, he comes with also the the pistol from Castle Grayskull that was in the. I don't know if you ever knew that Castle Grayskull and the original Castle Grayskull came with like a weapons rack. I know. Okay. I gave mine to you, and you painted it. That's right. That's right. Um, well, it came with a bunch of weapons that went on it. Mm -hmm. And so one of those weapons it came was with, the like, pistol. The bow staff thing that. Yeah. Um. So we had the pistol. And that snaps in here. I gave the pistol to Webster. That's, uh... He didn't have a weapon. No, he did. You just lost it. What was it? It was a green or uh, orange uh, two-handed blaster. Oh. Hey, we're so crazy on the tangents. Of this stuff. Sorry. What's going on here? And then you've got uh, the the sword from the Castle Grey Skull set, or a version of that. Just to get in here. Um, you okay? Mm -hmm. You got something in your throat? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, so then you got all these pieces you can put on there. And then he can carry all his weapons at once. Which is pretty amazing, right? Yeah. You okay, bud? Yeah. You seem like you're out of it. Are you, are you tired? Yeah. It's, I must have been a long day. This, this is a school night. The last time it wasn't a school night, this one is a school night. At least it's not past bedtime. It's not past bedtime yet, so I, I'm not breaking any rules. Alright, so, so there we go. Tons of accessories. And then to top it all off, not only does he have all that... But he's got an interchangeable head. So that it has the mustache version, like the Filmation version. I personally like that one. I know you like the mustache version. I like them both. I, I mean, I, I like the Filmation cartoon, so I like the mustache. But I also like no mustache. In the Comics. Yeah, like the mini, original mini-comics and the original version of the character with no mustache. It's kind of like a young man-in-arms and an older man-in-arms to me. So, there's all those. And then, uh, there's another thing I was going to mention. Oh, Okay. Uh, you know how we had problems with the half shirt before? Uh -huh. For Man at Arms, it's totally fine. Because the vintage figure did this, and he's not, like, exposing an actual stomach. Because he's got on a green bodysuit, and then the thicker armor over that. So, in case you got anybody was going to call me out for being a hypocrite, for saying, hey, Faker's got the belly shirt, Man at Arms does not have a belly shirt. He's got a green sure. bodysuit on, and then he's got the, the thick armor on over that. And you can just do so many cool things with this, too. I'm I'm jumping all over the place. But, like, you could do these really cool poses with the head. Like, he can hunker him down so he's looking just, like, Once over the mask. I was playing with Keans, and I pretend that he was going through stink wars for us, and he had to wear that. Exactly, yeah. You can hunker him down so that his mouth is actually covered with this mouth guard area. It's just such a great figure. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's perfect. There's uh, there's a few light figures in this line that are absolutely perfect. Man in Arms is one of them, I think. Mm -hmm. He's a perfect figure. All right, so let's talk about the bio. After the bio, can I say what I was going to say? Yeah, just don't forget it, okay? Okay. Okay. You ready? Uh-huh. Man in Arms, real name Duncan. I can find with that. That's totally a formation cartoon. Totally fine with that. For two centuries, the attorney and weapons master and combat instructor to the royal family has been called the Man at Arms. Trained by the renowned tactician Dector, Decker, Decker, I said Decker, Decker, and a veteran of the Great Unrest, Duncan was asked by King Randor to step into this position and fortify his guard with an elite strike force, which he named the Masters of the Universe. Wow. In addition to his skills in combat, Duncan is also a great inventor and helped construct an electronic version of the Power Sword for Adam to use until he can unite both halves of Grayskull's sword. That reminds me, I forgot an accessory he comes with. I was thinking about it, I was like... I bet he's going to show that so I totally Jeff, forgot I it. I just hope he doesn't want me to not mention it, because I'm getting ready to just say it out. Okay, so let me finish up the bio. Man in Arms and his adopted daughter, Tila, often scout the borders of Eternia for signs of lurking evil. All right, so I forgot something. Man at Arms was one of the first ones to come with sort of a secret accessory. He came with the 2000s version power sword for you to stick with your human. Okay, I used to like that better, as I told you in one of our videos. Exactly, but you but changed your mind I since looked then. over it, and I was like, Wow, I really see difference it's in the sword. really weird, isn't it? Yeah. The Techno Sword? Alright, so I forgot to show that when I was going through the accessories, but that's okay, because that, that, that sword is best left forgotten anyway. Right? Yeah. And if you want to check out the pictures on the site, you can see that sword if you're in there to see it. Let's break this down. Totally fine with him being called Duncan. Totally fine with him being the Attorney and Weapons Master. Trained by the renowned tactician Decker. That's from the 2000X cartoon. I'm okay with that. Decker seemed like I have a cool character. I'm okay. Veteran Master of the Great of, Unrest. Master of the Universe is my biggest problem. We're, we're getting to that. We're, I think we both don't like that. Duncan was asked by King Randor to step into the position 
fortify his guard with an elite strike force, which he named the Masters of the Universe. How pompous is that? Hmm, my elite strike force? I'm going to call them the Masters of the Universe. I'm going to be a master so bad, I'm just going to name all of these people Yeah, I, I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to trump everybody and call my team the Masters of the Universe. There's nothing you can do about it. Hmm. We're the Masters of the Universe. I have no problem with there being evil, we've said this before, I have no problem with there being evil masters and good masters. I do have a problem with them dubbing themselves the masters of the universe. Yeah. That's just, I mean, it's just so ridiculously pompous. Okay, so in addition to his skills in combat, Duncan is also a great inventor, and helped construct an electronic version of the power sword for Adam to use until he could unite both halves of Grayskull's Skull Sword. That's another problem. I have another problem with that. We don't need the Techno Sword in this whole canon, okay? We don't need it. There was no reason to include it, other than the fact that they included it with the figure as a bonus. If you like the 2000 sword, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. That's cool. But for this continuity to say that Duncan invented this electronic sword because Adam was unable to unite both halves of Grayskull sword. Dude, he's human. He's, How he, can exactly. He, do that? he was the one that was destined to do it. What took him so long? I can put them together right now. It, it takes like two seconds. It's like, oh man, this is the hardest Yeah, I, I can't ever. do it, Duncan. Do you think you can invent some other sword? That I can use because me, like, the chosen one, I'm not able to unite these it's things. It's like one of those baby puzzles that babies have that have the exactly. picture on it. He and can't do it. You can see where to put the puzzle pieces. Exactly. Man, you just chumped out Adam hardcore right then. You were like, you can't even do a baby puzzle. Sorry, Adam. That's what happens. Okay, and then it ends with Man in Arms and his adopted daughter, Tila, often scout the borders of Eternia for signs of lurking evil. That's straight out of the old toy line, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of major problems with the bio, but the figure is. Two thumbs up all the way. If I had a thousand hands, I'd put all of them up. He's great. I mean, he is fantastic. It's great to see such an important character get such a great figure. Because Man in Arms is, is really a great character. You need him in the line. Perfectly done. I mean, I, you can't top it. I know I need him in You, the, you need him in your I line. I like all the different important people. Dude, he's expensive people. now. Wait, I have all... I know he's eighty dollars. I have all the important people in the palace except him. I have Adam, Cringer, Marlena, King Randor, even many faces and robots. I'm getting called out. It's not my fault you weren't in the vintage line when they came out. Okay, well here's the thing. Here's the thing too. They were only re-released him once, and I think my opinion is that they're. And we talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. I think that they're holding back some of the reissues that come with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because it probably costs a lot to do those guys because it comes with so much stuff. Mm -hmm. And Man in Arms comes with a lot of stuff. So Man in Arms hasn't been reissued for in a while. I think he's only been reissued one time. I'm not sure if Tila has ever been reissued. You I don't think she has. Me. I got one for you. But I don't think she's ever been reissued. And she came with a lot of stuff. She had two heads, the snake armor. She had the, the staff. She had Zoar. She had her sword. She had a lot of stuff, too. And she hasn't been reissued. Didn't she have a gun? No, she didn't have a gun. Oh, that was the other one, Battleground. Exactly. And then you had, like, Web Store, which I don't think he's been reissued. And he's got, like... His gun, he's got the two extra arms on his pack, he's got the grappling hook, the string, you got Triclops, he hasn't been reissued, he came with the Doomseeker, a stand, a sword, the, the ring. Oh, the, his little robot. Yeah, so I, I think that they're holding off on some of the guys that come with a lot of stuff, and that it costs them a lot of, uh, well, a lot of money, more money to do it now. Until two weeks from this Friday. Oh yeah, you got power kind of coming up, so you're mm -hmm. saving money. They won't do one by then, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so, I mean, that's just my opinion, I, I don't know if that's true, but it just seems like... The ones that have more stuff aren't coming back as quickly as the ones that don't have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like Stratos, who I don't think we really needed a reissue on, got a reissue. I mean, or was he customer service doc? I don't know, but that's just my opinion. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but that's what I think. I guess that's it for this one, right? Uh-huh. All right, so we're signing off. Um, we'll see you guys again soon. Wait, I didn't tell my thing. Oh, yeah, go oh, wait, ahead. Wait, never mind. That was my thing. That was your thing. palace, guys. Okay, we're going to be skipping Hero next time, because I've lost the green gem to one of my staffs. So there's no reason to do it until it's all complete. So once I get that going again, we'll get back to Hero. So we're going to skip Hero and move on to the next figure after Hero. Who's here after Hero? Come on, dude. You know I don't know that. I'll keep track of that. All right, so you want to say good journey? Good journey. Good journey. We'll see you guys next time.